Okay, here we go with another one of our wet cloth series. Putting a viable principle into what is practiced today. See what the Bible has to say, rather than tradition. Today we're going to look at birthday. And there's the difference between birthday and birth date. So Genesis chapter 40, let's jump right into the Bible. Genesis chapter 40, verse 20. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday. That's the first time it shows up in the Bible and is connected with Egypt, type of the world, and connected with Pharaoh. Shows up three times in the Bible. Which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto his servants. So he has the party. He does not invite him. And he lifted up his head, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and of the chief baker among the servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. The first birthday ends up with a. A man gets a rope around his neck and he gets death. First birthday in the Bible is connected with Pharaoh, is connected with Egypt, connected with a party, and is connected with the death of the baker. Kind of funny, the baker dies, and yet we celebrate birthdays today with a cake. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Let's look at the other two places it shows up in the Bible. Matthew 14. Matthew 14. We're looking at the Bible. I want to do what the Bible says. You don't? That's your problem. That's between you and God. But we're not on very good ground so far. Matthew 14, verse 6. But when Herod's birthday, uh-oh, a Roman ruler. Rome was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. So here is a, a woman dancing at this man's party. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she went, she being before instructed of her mother, give me here John the Baptist has in a charger. And the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake and them that sat with him at me, he commanded it to be given her. He sent and beheaded John in the prison. John the Baptist. Before we comment, let's go to the last place. Mark 6. Mark chapter 6, verse number 21. Mark 6, 21. Before we comment, Matthew, let's get all the birthdays. When a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his Lord. So the birthdays we see in the Bible is the birthday boy given the celebration. We got Egypt and we got Rome. Two far places of not Christianity. Now you have a false Christianity from Rome called Catholic and they're not Christians at all. They killed Christians, Fox's Book of Mormon. But here's the birthday. Made a supper to his lords, high captains, chief of states of Galilee. And when the daughter of said Herodias came in and danced, they pleased Herod and them that sat with him. And the king said unto the dancer, Ask me whatsoever thou shalt will, and I will give it to thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? She said, The head of John the Baptist. She came straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that you give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was a seeing sorry, and yet for the old sake, and for this, their sake that sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and that's the only place that word shows up in the Bible, and commanded his head to be brought. And when he went, and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head in a charger. 
Why is the three places in the Bible about birthday that is celebrated? Happy birthday to you. Why is it resulted in a death? One man eh, by the neck with a rope and the other guy, his head is removed by an ax or by a sharp instrument. Isn't it kind of ironic that the birthdays that show up in the Bible, the two events, three places, but the two events, they're both rulers. A man loses his neck to a rope or to a sword or ax. It is death by neck. Isn't that convenient? And that the birthday party was given by the birthday he. And they're both they're both rulers of nations that are not Christian. We can just stop right there, but we're not going to. So let's go all the way back to Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2. This may be a two-parter. I don't know. See what happens. Got a lot to say. People probably are not even going to do the one part. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. There's no birthday. It's a creation day for man, the first man. And notice God did the breathing, not man in candles. We'll see that in a moment. We'll meet probably part two if we have to do this two part. The first man had no birth date, had no birthday. Adam had no belly button. All right, let's go far into the Bible, Genesis 2, 21. Won't go far. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh there instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. The first woman, the first woman that God made, had no birthday, had no birthday, did not come of a woman. She had no belly button. Find me in the Bible where Adam and Eve celebrate birthdays. And God said they lived to a certain age, but, you know, people are going there just, just, oh, you know, every year they had a birthday, else how they old would they know they'd be? Yeah, you, you would go around and twist the situation so you can bring about your celebration. All right, let's go further into the Bible. Genesis 4, 1. Ooh, far into the Bible. And Adam knew his, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. All right, they're born. What's the birthday? It's not given. You would think that God would have great celebrations of birthday, that he would give us the, these dates that they happen so we can look for a birthday. We're missing dates. We're missing dates. And that's very important. So there's no birthday. Luke 2. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Verse 6. Luke 2, 6. And so it was that while they were there, that the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, Jesus, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. We know that story. What's the birthday? It's not given. And the birthday, the birth date of Jesus Christ, of all 66 books of the Bible, only Luke, the medical doctor, records the birthday of Jesus. Many say December 25th. Absolutely correctly not. That's absurd. That's Tammuz's birthday. Now we can look at scripture. We can have the implication of the Feast of Tabernacles, but it's not recorded. There is no birthday given. 
the first man, the first woman, the first two children born, and Jesus Christ himself. Now you want to give me chapter and verses in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John where the disciples had a birthday party for Jesus? Where Jesus threw a birthday party for Peter? Where John would have a birthday? Matthew? Will you show me in the Bible of the Gospels of the life of Jesus? Birthdays. And the celebrations thereof. Can you show me the law besides the, the Passover, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Panica, the, the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Trumpets, the, uh, the birthday feast? You want to show me? Can you give me chapter and verse and book of the King James Bible? I gave you Genesis, I gave you Matthew, I gave you Mark. Of Egypt and Rome. And two men dying associated with the neck come on John 3 3 John 3 3 we seem to forget this verse when we talk about birthday you know every man that is born is either going to go to heaven by Jesus Christ or going to go to hell when a woman becomes pregnant she has populated heaven or hell. Let's see what Jesus has to say. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Must be something wrong with that first birth. If Jesus said you got to be born again because there's something wrong with the first birth, and then we go, what, what's your birth? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> you must be born again. Got to be something wrong with the first birth. 3 5. Jesus answered very, very, say to thee, except the man be born of water, there's mother, water broke, and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, that's your birthday, birthday, is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Every man that is born of a woman needs to be born again. If you're not born again, you will not go to heaven. That is the classification that God and Jesus Christ put about being born of a woman. You are in the flesh. You're not of the spirit. You are in your sins. You need to be born again. Shall we honor your birthday? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 Notice we're looking at the Bible. Notice we're looking at the Bible. Being born again. Oh, not of a corruptible seed but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and bideth forever. So when I was born, September 6th, I was born of a corruptible seed by parents who were sinners, by grandparents who were sinners, by great-great-great-grandparents who were sinners, by Adam and Eve who sinned against God. Had I never gotten saved, I would have died and gone to hell. In April 21st, 1987, I became born again. I am saved. I have the Spirit. Without the new birth, you don't have the Spirit, you're not saved. So let's go ahead and celebrate our old nature, the old creature. Oh, we wouldn't do that. Happy birthday to you. How come churches don't celebrate the new birth? I have not ever been in a church where, hey, when were you born again? April 21st. All right, April 21st, this is the day that Stalin got born again. Why do you celebrate the, the birthday of the birthday when you were born in sin? We got more. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 10 is rejected, probably so is Jeremiah 20. 
If you don't know Jeremiah 10, that's the other holiday. Jeremiah 20, verse 14. Jeremiah 20, verse 14. 14. Cursed be the day where I was born. You get that? Jeremiah, let's have a birthday for you. Cursed be the day I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Happy. Happy birthday to you. Jeremiah said, shut up. That's scripture. To happy birthday, Jeremiah said, shut up and let me curse. I don't like how you talk. Oh. Curse be the man who brought tidings to my father. A man child is born. Say a man, say a man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Oh, I have a son. A son has been born to me. Let them that let yeah, and let that man be as the cities which the Lord overthrew, and repented not, and let him hear the cry of the morning and the shouting of the new time, because he showed me not from the womb, and that my mother may might have been my grave. And her womb to always great with me. Wherefore came I forth out of my mother's womb to see labor and sorrow that my day should be consumed with shame. Jeremiah says, since I have been born, it has been shame, it has been sorrow, it's been misery, it's been troubles. We'll look at that moment in a moment. Why was I not a stillborn? Jeremiah, happy birthday. Shut up. How was that? He cursed his birthday. Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. After this, opened Job his mouth and cursed his day, birthday. And Joe thank and said, let the day perish wherein I was born, birthday. And the night in which it was said, there's a man child conceived. That's exactly what Jeremiah said. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Light candles. God, don't you even regard my birthday or birthday. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for the night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the numbers of the month. Lo, let the night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Joyful of a, of a birthday party? Let them curse it that curse the day who are ready to raise up their morning. That's what Jeremiah said. Let the stars and twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none candle go out. Neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb. That's what Jeremiah said. Nor hid sorrow from my eyes. That's what Jeremiah said. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Why were the breasts that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept and had, and had I been at rest. Sounds real happy moment for Job, doesn't it? Sounds like a very happy moment for Jeremiah, didn't it? Job 5, 7. Job 5, 7. Yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upwards. You ever see a campfire? You ever see those sparks? There's more troubles. 14, 1. 14, 1. Job's a wise man. He was a counselor. People came to him. Man that is born of a woman is all uh, yeah. man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Interesting. 
15, 14. What is man that he should be clean? And he which is born of a woman that he should be righteous. Yeah, something wrong with the first birth, Job, isn't it? Jesus said you need to be born again. You must be born again. Peter says the new birth is incorruptible seed by the word of God. And interesting. Leviticus 12. Leviticus 12. Leviticus 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. In the eighth day, she, in the eighth day, the flesh of his fur, of his foreskin shall be circumcised. She shall then continue in the blood of purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks. As in her separation, she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering. A Jewish woman, a, a person under the law, a woman who has given birth to a male or a daughter, a female, has to give a sin offering. That's born of the water. Let's see Mary, verse 8. And if it be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles, two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, that's what Mary brought, the one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. That's what Mary brought. Mary confirmed that she was a sinner she had sinned. She was born of sin from her parents, running all the way back from Luke chapter 3, back to Adam and Eve. Don't tell me Mary was not sinless. She was. Sinner. According to Leviticus chapter 12 and Luke chapter 2, 24. How are we doing on birth date and birthday? I don't see no celebration. I see sin. Unless you get the new birth. No new birth? Well, you're in trouble. So, let's look at some other aspects here. I, I, I thought we were going to be longer. So, let's look at some aspects here about birthday. It all started with the Egyptians. Scholars who study the Bible say that the early mention of Bible, we uh, of birthdays in the Bible, we saw that in Genesis 40, is a reference to Pharaoh's birthday. The a study of the Pharaohs would be that Pharaohs are gods or were inclined to be called gods. And at the moment of his crowning, their birth is to be a god, small g-o-d. When the Egyptian pharaohs were crowned in ancient Eve, they were considered to have transformed into gods. So when the birthday of Pharaoh is the marking of his crownship, and not the new birth, but the birth of a god coming into him, making him a god. Birthday. Birthday in the Bible, the first place that it shows up for is that a man becomes a king who is not the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he is marking by his birthday, I am a god of Egypt, who is a type of world that God kept telling his people, don't go back there. And a man lost his head. Being hung. Pagans of, of Greek, ancient Greece, believed that each person had a spirit that was present on the day of his birth. 
The spirit kept watch and had a mystic relation with a god whose birthday that particular individual was born. Gods and goddesses, fallen, false, not God of the Bible, are a huge part of Greek culture, Greek mythology. Greeks often had the tributes and sacrifices to appease these gods. The lunar goddess Artemis was no different. As a tribute to her, the Greeks would offer a moon-shaped cakes to adorn with lit candles to recreate the growing radiance of the moon of Artemis' previous beauty. Now, I'm going to look up something here I did not look up before. Let me get this. Uh, Jeremiah 7.18 what did I say? I said, little moon cakes to Artemis. Jeremiah 7, 18, the children gathered wood, and the fathers kindled the fire. Fire, children, women need their dough to make cakes. Ah, oh, happy birthday. Women need their doughs to make cakes to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings unto other gods to provoke God to anger. How's that? Jeremiah 44, 17. But we will certainly do what sober thing goeth forth out of our mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and to pour out our drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah, in the cities, in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of vittles, and uh, all and were well and saw no evil. That's offering the queen of heaven. 44, 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have a toast. We have want of all things. So when we made the queen of heaven unhappy, we lost. And when we burned the incense to the queen of heaven, poured out our drink offering unto her, and did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out the drink offerings to her? So what are you looking at here? You're looking at cakes. You're looking at drink offerings. You're looking at light. And the Greeks have called it the moon. Mary is the moon god. And cakes and candles and, and lights and gods and become a god, are all associated with birthdays. How you doing so far? Again, we're looking at the Greeks, we can assume, adopted the Egyptian tradition of the birthday as the birth of a god. Exactly what the Egyptians believe. And with like pagan cultures, the days of major change, such as these birthdays, welcoming evil spirits. They lit candles in response to these spirits, almost as if it represented a light in the darkness. I thought Jesus Christ is the light. And that we walk in darkness without him. John chapter 3. And it implies that the birthday celebration started as a form of protection against these evil gods and devils. Is that what you're going to, as a Christian, is this the authority and the foundation that you're going to have a birthday? Gods, goddesses, Egypt, Greek. Again, you got this Artemis and her moon-shaped cake. The lunar goddess and her beauty. In addition to candles, family and friends would gather around the birthday person and to protect them from harm with good cheers, thoughts, and wishes. They would give gifts to bring even more good cheer that would ward off evil spirits. Now, what are you doing with birthdays now? The fact is that that cake is given to the queen of heaven, the lunar goddess, 
that it is a celebration of becoming a god and the bible says you shall become gods that everybody gathering around the person is to keep the evil spirits away from that person and noisemakers were also used to scare away unwanted evil <laughs> blowing the horns all that is in worship of gods and fallen gods and evil spirits of Satan. It seems to me that the first time history that a celebration of birth of non-religious figures. Regular Roman citizens would, would celebrate birthdays of their family. Roman citizens? Rome? Matthew? Mark, a family family member. The government, however, create public holidays and honors of famous citizens. You know, we have that. We got President's Day. We got MLK Day. We got this birthday. We got that. Kinderfest, Germany. Kinderfest, 18th century, a German birthday party. It would be close to our birthday start parties today. Kinder, which means German for kids. Feature a birthday cake adorned with candles, which came from the Greeks. Germany is not too far from Greek. Kids were given one candle atop the cake for each year they had been alive, plus one for the hope of living for at least one more year. So put your faith in that one candle for another year, not God. Blowing out the candles would make a wish was a great part of these celebrations. So trust in the candle. The candle is an artificial light, but Jesus Christ is the light. I've done that growing up. My birthday party, all right, blow out the candles, make a wish. I don't need to do that today. I have Jesus Christ, who is my light in darkness i don't make a wish i ask through prayer prayer and the thought to the human born with the original sin nonsense the fact that early birthdays were tried as pagan gods well good going that's the early christian church said now they put it with the original sin but they had the idea that that birthdays were tied to pagan gods and they are but they changed that to celebrate Jesus, his birthday on the holiday of Christmas. Since Christmas, well, we changed the whole idea of birthdays. And December 25th and Christ's Mass, Mary Christ's Mass, has nothing to do with the date or the birth of Jesus Christ. Absolutely not. And if you do a study of gods and goddesses, it is the birthday or birthday of Tammuz and not Jesus Christ. And then it was taken off for a special celebration of the Roman holiday Saturnium. So they combined, let's celebrate the birth of Jesus with a Roman holiday, Saturn. much marriage into the world. Now, I was born on a date, September 7th, 1968. I have a new birth date. The date that my name was written down in the last book of life by the testimony and by the merit and by the finished work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. April 21st, 1987. And I may have been saved before that date. You run back six days, April 21st is a Saturday. On Sunday morning, I went to church and I heard the gospel. And between Sunday and Friday, probably Wednesday or Thursday, I got a hold of my grandmother between, after Sunday, after the church meeting. And I told her, I need to speak to somebody. I was like Cornelius, I need to speak to somebody. I gotta know what to do. I got there, there's something that's come over me and it's not right with me. 
And I had a brother from my church, Joe Caswell, come on Saturday afternoon, April 21st, in my grandma's living room and open a Bible to me, told me I'm going to hell, I need to be saved, and I got saved that afternoon. What's that do with my original birthday? Hey, I was born. But my new birth overrides my old birth because my new birth now has made me a new creature. I am a child of God. I am no longer a child of the devil. John 8, 44. My first birth made me a father's devil. The devil's called God. Small G-O-D. He's God's. Small G-O-D-S. And they're referencing all these births that people are born of their father, the devil. But the new birth brings you into the family of God, brings you a child of God through Jesus Christ. And not once have I ever heard anybody, seen anybody, let's celebrate the new birthday. No, let's celebrate the old birthday that you were born into trouble, problems, situation, everything else like that. Oh, you just ruined, ruined the fun. You must not have a good faith. You don't stop. Hey, I have much fun serving the Lord. I don't need that pagan nonsense. I got enough troubles with my sins in my life. I don't need those gods. I am not pleasing the God of my salvation by having that nonsense. That's. And the fact is that the two places in the Bible that mentions birthdays, three times in the Bible, it does not have a good condemnation. And you do not see anywhere else, any saint, any child of God, any friend of God, anybody of God, or even Jesus Christ or his disciples, or the early church in the book of Acts, or Paul write in anything about birthday celebrations. And you can't say, well, they didn't do it because they did it in the time of Egypt in Exodus, I mean, excuse me, Genesis. And we backed it up in the time of Rome in the Gospels. So the opportunity for Jesus and the disciples to have birthdays were there because it was in Genesis and it was in Matthew and Mark, but it's not there when it comes to Christian worship. And I would assume, I'm going to assume, which I don't think I'm wrong, uh, and if I need to confess it, I will confess it, put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I think God honors the second birth more than the first birth. Now, you have to have the first birth to get the second birth. But the second birth gives you an outstanding presence in the God as a child of God rather than the first birth. The first birth makes you a sinner. It makes you accountable to sins. The second birth washes you of your sins. Now, freedom. You can do what you want. I choose not to. I believe it pleases God to say no to the nonsense. And I think that's exactly what it is. I think it's nonsense. I don't think God approves of it. And we'll all find out the judgment seat of Christ. When you're, I believe your birthday celebrations are going to go poof. You can make all the wishes you get you want. You're not going to get reward. Simple to say. Look at the scriptures. 